to be taken a call on the Rugby World Cup uh, in our own legislation. I just want to be clear here. This side of the house is very supportive of rugby. Yeah. We are very supportive of the Rugby World Cup 2011 and we are very supportive of the legislation that is here before the house. And let me say very, very slowly, the, Le the New Zealand Labour Party is opposing this legislation. And it does make me sad. It makes me sad because we had quite a collegial select committee process and I've looked through this piece of legislation and I can't see a minority report. So what happened? Something happened between the point that it came to the House and what we know is that there was some issues around the Canterbury earthquake provision and they, and they got a bit scared. So we accept that. However, let me just make this point. This is the third largest sporting event in the world. It's the, it's the largest sporting event that New Zealand has ever held and it's really important in my view to put that into context. So when 85,000 tourists are coming here, not only do we need to have the infrastructure in place, but all of the committee actually recognised that there might inevitably be difficult situations arise and we need to put some legislation in, um, in place to deal with that. So we've, we've gone there, we've, we've, we've sold 500,000 tickets, we've, we've um, moved ahead with all the stadia and now we want to put this legislation in place that would deal with unforeseen situations as they may arise and I want to deal now with the members opposite who have been um, sort of saying this is all about great, wielding great power around the Rugby World Cup. Well let me just bring some of those members back to planet Earth. Mm. The fact is this is the largest sporting event to ever be held in New Zealand. We are dealing with significant numbers of people. We are dealing with significant issues in terms of infrastructure, transport. What we're saying is we don't envisage these provisions to be used. We don't want them to be used. But if a situation arose, if a situation arose, is it possible that we may want to have a provision or a process that says the Rugby World Cup authority will put a recommendation and it might be that the minister might say we actually disagree with that after consulting with the Minister of Economic Development and other relevant ministers. And I, on this side of the House, and my, most of my colleagues, think that is an entirely reasonable proper proposition. We've seen some of the issues that have happened in Delhi. This is New Zealand Inc. on the line. This is our reputation. And it is this side of the House's view that actually we... It is, it is prudent and reasonable to have a process within this legislation that, and, and ultimately, let me say this, at the end of the day, the Rugby World Cup is scheduled right before an election. We believe that if a situation did arise and the, and the Minister did exercise those powers, then it is better that the Minister is accountable to the electorate, to the people of New Zealand, than some unelected people on the Rugby World Cup empowering authority. So I'm pleased to be supporting this legislation because this, mem this side of the House are very clear that we want to have a Rugby World Cup that runs smoothly so that we can show the world um, what a great country we have and that we can hold world class events and we support this legislation and we're proud to do that and the other side are playing petty politics and I'm proud to support this legislation. I call